Okay, so as you may have seen, my header bolt's fucked off. So I've got some new ones. Um, but while I'm, as I'm going to put the front end back together, one of the reasons they came loose, and I'll be honest here, is, is me not sorting things out sooner. There is a bit of play in there. It's not a brilliant seal, if I'm completely honest. So when I put it back together, I used normal gum gum, and it just blew the gum gum out. It just never worked. So I should have sorted it before, and because of that rattling, it's caused the header bolts to come loose. That's what happened. I'm going to take the system off tonight, clean it up a bit tomorrow, put it all back together, reseal that um, somehow, and yeah, it will be all sorted, and Derek will be back up and running. But if people seem to love these sorts of videos, I thought, well, why not? I'll do a video. I would love to get some new white plastics. I've actually been looking for a new set of plastics for this bike. Um, in white, I can deal with the blue ones. They're not so bad. It's the white ones. They faded, and they're, I just I'd like to get new white fairings. Um, and I, mean, I haven't really been able to find those. I found a kit, but I have to buy the entire kit. That it doesn't seem possible to actually buy blue and white fairing kits anymore. Even made by Asibis, they just do the black ones. It seems. Which actually really sucks. Of course, I could cover it in vinyl and stuff like that, but then I lose the fact that it's a plastic, and with plastics, you don't really have to care too much about them. You know? Who cares? I imagine this is just going to come. I've never really understood why people like the sort of garage videos, unless it was a specific job that they wanted to know how to do. But for like this, this is just common stuff, there's nothing special going on. Those threads look nasty. So I'm going to clean those up. Seems to be. I always forget the exhaust is attached through the foot peg. Every time. <laughs> Give it up. Come on. Come on. Oh, obviously I got the foil back in, but no, not very well. If you're wondering what this stuff I'm spraying on this is, it's like a degreaser. It's called Jizzer! And it's great for getting crud off. I'm not sure if this is standard or not, but to make this midpipe fit around the shock, it has a big dent in it. I don't know, I'm not sure that that is a factory specification.
It's a little rustier than I realised. I'm probably going to have to actually sand this back a little bit and then polish it. But yeah, it's okay, it's not structurally um, damaged. This is an FMF power bomb header. I didn't buy it, came in a bite. Obviously we have the Electec end can and the miscellaneous hammer precisely created mid pipe. Now, can I get my hand in the hole? There's the old gasket. Well, actually, it's not in too bad shape, but yeah, we've got a new one. I really shouldn't start it while it hasn't got an exhaust on it, but if I don't do it, you're going to kill me, aren't you? That's enough. No more of that. You can um, burn your valves doing stuff like that for a while. A few seconds wouldn't have done anything. It might not actually be a Coke can. It looks too long to make a Coke can. It might be just some thin sheet metal, or I think gum gum do um, some sort of bandage for exhausts. And it's possible it's something like that. Problem is, I, the gap in between isn't huge, so I can't really get a lot of stuff in there. So I might end up seeing what I can get. But there we go, exhaust is off, ready to get going tomorrow. Okay, I want to clean the header pipes up a little bit. Um, I considered going back to metal, you can see I've actually did it on a spot here, you can't really see. And, yeah, it's it's going to take so long to do that, and it's, oh, I've thought, sod it, I'm just going to take the rust off using a scour and some light oil, um, and then I'm going to polish them up afterwards, but for now, it's just a lot of scrubbing. try something a bit more aggressive. I could just sand them. I might still do. I'm going to try and take the worst off. Sanding is the best And rubbing oil on it, you know, cleaning it off a little bit, it really highlights where there's more rust and where there's the actual metal. This may not be the prettiest of jobs in the end, but I am going to try and refinish it to a point. But I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, stick some tunes on and just get on with this for an hour. <laughs>
Right, what I've done is I've used an 80 grit wheel on the drill, and I've used a 240 paper and then 600, and you can see I've got it back to its original colour. I have purposefully left some of the, um, the deeper stuff, I mean I could go deeper into this but I don't want to go too deep into metal, but also, having just a bit of coloration pattern, when it starts to blue back in, might look quite cool. It's going to end up brown anyway, but the rust is off it, that's the important thing. But yeah, so now I'm going to go to a much higher grit, probably a thousand, uh, with a bit of oil, and just polish that on. Then the metal polish, and then it'll be done. It's only taken probably three quarters of an hour so far, maybe slightly longer, maybe an hour. So we're getting a much better polish on it. It's a dull polish. It'll get brighter the finer it gets. From brown rust to that in less than an hour. Not bad. Of course now follows another probably 40 minutes of me sanding, which is very boring. So yeah, finer grits and then I'll go to metal polish. Okay, so I've got it to a reasonable shine. I'm now just going to polish it using some metal polish. But for a start, it ain't bad. We've got the header on. I've got the bolts loosely in. This isn't being tightened down yet because I need to get everything on, get it all lined up, and then start tightening everything down um, so everything's in the right place because it's going to crush that uh, exhaust gasket and it needs to be in the right position. And it's just easier to get everything on first loosely and tighten it down and tighten it down. Starting from the front, working your way back. That's why I do it anyway. This is where I do have a problem. That belongs about there, but this is, look at the gap, way too big. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, gum gum silencer bandage, which is basically this like treated material that you dampen and then it will, you can mould it around where you want, force it all together, clamp it down, and then when it heats up it will set. So uh, yeah, that hopefully should work. Even though it was pretty loose before, there wasn't a lot of gas escaping, it was mainly just the rattling. So there is a bit of a seal being formed back here where this is uh, this has been swaged up. Ideally we should swage this up as well, I think swage is the right word, and then it would fit a lot better. But for now, this will do. You're supposed to dampen this but not soak it. So. Uh This is definitely not the done thing necessarily to use this bandage stuff, but it should work. I'm using the holes cut in the exhaust to really bunch it up so it really fills that gap. And then when I clamp on top of it, it should hold it.
Well, as it turns out, the radiator fan and the radiator hose are right in the way. I'm going to have to see what I can move because I cannot get enough torque on these. You don't have to go too brutish on them. That'll do. Yeah, it turns out you do need to basically just take the radiator off because you're never going to get anything in there otherwise. As the gasket crushes, it will lose a little bit of tension. But that's enough. No more. Because this is a fixed point, and that's a fixed point, I can actually do this one up in the middle now. So the bandage is crammed down in there. I'm going to make sure that the uh, clamp is nowhere near the engine. So if it does vibrate a bit, it's not going to be smacking into the side of the engine. Because you don't want that. Okay, what I've ended up doing is I've used a piece of the metal that was in there before, just one wrap, which I've then I've sort of started the, the bandage on, then put the metal over it and twisted it and then put bandage over the top. And now I'm basically, it's a bit like corking on a boat. I'm tamping more of that bandage down in there. And this is tightening the fit up no end. And then I'll clamp it. And then when it gets run, it all set. It's certainly not the slickest or the best way necessarily, but it's going to work for me. Solid as a rock. Much better. And there you go, from crusty and brown and horrible to not bad at all, and a couple of hours work. And all it's cost is some sandpaper, a little bit of oil, an old t-shirt and some metal polish. Beautiful. I should have polished the mid-pipe properly off the bike. I thought I had more access to it, but I don't. And to be fair, it doesn't really matter because you don't see more than that bit.
it's okay so the brackets all tightened up I've actually moved this down here rather than back here because it used to be back here because I like the fact you couldn't see the strap but it just didn't hold it tight enough now it's absolutely solid so I'm being sensible <sighs> my back is absolutely fucked Major problems with it because I'm so tall. <sighs> Always the worst case, that screw hasn't fallen out. Where the hell is it? I'm basically done, I'll find that in a second, it's pretty caught up somewhere. Let's have a listen and see what this sounds like now. Better. I now just have to find that one freaking screw and no it's not a just find a different screw put it in there because I don't know where it's caught in this suspension or what. Oh my back's killing me and I've got to tidy this up so there you go. Exhaust clean and put back on. To make the bandage go off it just has to get hot which it now has from doing that so that will start setting. I found the screw it was on the bike at the bottom of the shock there's like a little cup against the frame and it was in there and had I ridden the bike it could have very likely got banged again and again into the frame would have been horrible ended up having to make this which was a very, you know, very long screwdriver to get through everything and then a little hook of wire on the end I just got over the end of the threads turned and picked it up worked perfectly so there we go from brown and rusty to lovely it's going great and the new clutch feels great It's so good to fix stuff yourself. And now, after a few days hard work, Derek is back. Sounding better than ever, looking better than ever, going better than ever. Oh, I'm starting to feel guilty about this. Rare is, um... Oh! Okay, no, I've got, oh, I can't be that mean. <laughs> Basically, I'm in need can. of a really long Allen key. So I've tied it up as much as I can by hand. And I have to try and get to Lumi's 